Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. Nice to be here with you again. Uh, today we are looking at some science experience. We're not playing with water today. Um, so if I was to say, uh, look around this room and tell me something that's at rest, what would you say? Something at rest. Well, exactly. What do you think at rest means? Oh, uh, not moving? Aha! So what is something we see here? Pool table's not Pool at rest. Table. Okay. Foosball table. Foosball table. Not us, because we need it. You guys are never at rest. Okay. So what about this chair? This chair is at rest right now. Yeah. What would it take for it to not be at rest? Some initial force. So we go like that. So that gives it some movement, or the fancy word is inertia. Can you say that, Eva? Inertia? Inertia. 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 <laughs> so that's what it means. And, and so inertia is making things move. Now, what are some times that we are at rest? When we're sleeping. When we're sleeping is really the only time you guys <laughs> are at rest is when you're sleeping. I actually um, move around in the night. So. But what makes, what makes us move? What can help make us move? Uh, wedding. 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 Yeah, food. wedding. Wedding. Basically, as long as you're not sleeping, wedding. isn't it? Wedding. Yeah. Wedding. Okay. Wedding. 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 Yes, running. Now, here's the thing, though, right? Um, you guys kind of start moving once we get going, don't we? Mm -hmm. Now, do you guys ever worry about things? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What should we do when we worry? Pray. Pray. And... The Bible tells us that what, even though if our minds are busy, that God can help us with our worry. Right? Okay. I'm going to, to talk about that in a, in a story. But there's many times that we are worried. We are always, we often do stuff, don't we? We don't sit still. No. But here's our verse, okay? Our verse says, my soul is quiet and waits for God alone. My hope comes from him. Him. Right. So it says, My soul is quiet and waits, okay, for God alone. My hope comes from. Him. So, what we need to do, I think, is something as adults and kids, is we need to stop and wait and rest in God. And it's hard. As you can see, these guys can't even sit still. <laughs> so, we want to wait and rest. Now, I'm going to tell you about a time when the Israelites had trouble with this, okay? The Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. They were stuck. They wanted to get out and really run away from that. Okay, And God brought Moses into the picture. And Moses talked to Pharaoh. And eventually, Pharaoh said, yeah, you guys can go. So they marched off into the desert. Okay. However, Pharaoh changed his mind after that and started chasing them with his army. And, and the Israelites came up. Uh, against a big sea, right? So they have a sea on one side, an army on the other side. Would you be worried? Yes. Let's read about it, okay? Okay. So, as Pharaoh and his army approached the people of Israel, could see them in the distance, marching towards them. The people began to panic. They cried out to the Lord for help. Then they turned against Moses and complained. So how often do we complain when we get worried, right? Uh, Is that the right thing to do? No. Okay, so they complained. Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? Why did you make us leave? Didn't we tell you to leave us while we were still in Egypt? Our Egyptian slavery was far better than dying in the wilderness. So they're basically upset at what God has done so far. They're not waiting and trusting. They're upset and complaining. Mm -hmm. So this is what Moses says. Plan. This is what Moses says to complaining people. This is, this is great. He says, But Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. Just stand where you are and watch the Lord rescue you. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You don't have to lift a finger. So it says, for the first thing is, Don't be afraid. Just stand where you are. And watch the Lord rescue you. So what's he telling them to do? Just watch for this. Watch and wait and not do it all on their own. Which is what we try to do so hard, right? Uh -huh. right. Okay. And uh, so the Lord says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. 
Uh, use your shepherd's staff, hold it out over the water, and the path will open up before you to go through the sea. And all the people will walk through dry ground. Coolest thing, right? Oh, yeah. So they're standing, sea on one side. They can't swim with all that million people. Big army come behind to attack them. God tells them, hold your staff up, and I will make a path for you. Okay? <clears throat> it's so cool. Um, so a cloud settled between the Israelite and the Egyptian camps. At night, the pillar of the cloud turned into a pillar of fire, uh, but the cloud came to darkness. Raised his hand. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the sea on dry ground with the walls of water in each side. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. How do you think it would take you to pass through? Pass through? I don't know. It's a big sea. That's a good question. One hour. Then you know what happened at the end of there? So, uh, so they walked on dry ground. They got across. And uh, when they were across, so as the sun began to rise, uh, well, what happened also is the Egyptians were racing after them. Uh, they, the road... So the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea, the waters roared back to his usual place, and the Lord swept the terrified Egyptians into the swerging currents. The waters covered all the chariots and charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh, and all the Egyptians who had chasers in the sea, not a single one survived. Okay? They, the Lord helped set them free from the Egyptian army that was chasing after them. Okay? Um, they needed to stop and rest, like it said back there. Moses told the people, don't be afraid, just stand where you are and watch the Lord rescue you. How often do we always keep moving, keep being busy, where you do not are very good at stopping and resting? Okay, so Look, we need to... Look, I on the um, um, seventh day is rest. Yes, oh yes, we need to rest and rest in Him, right? Which we are not very good at. So we're talking about inertia and rest and moving. So we've got some little experiments to show you about that. So I, I made this thing to show you. It's just two pop bottles cut in half, taped together, with a string that runs through. So we're going to get Malcolm to hold one side of the strings. It's a little, little twisty. It's going to twist out. Okay. All right. And we're going to get Charlotte to hold the strings on the other side. Aww. Here, Charlotte. Eva, you would hurt Now, hands you guys right? come move over this way a little bit so everybody can, at home can see. Eva, come stand over here. Okay, so. Hey, no, it needs to be on my side. Okay, so Malcolm, step in a bit more. Charles, tip over a little bit more. Okay, so Wait. right, right, wait, wait, wait. Right now, the little bubble is at rest. Okay, but when we add some force and give it a bit of inertia, woo, we're gonna go. It's like a zinger. <laughs> the trick is to try to stop it at you before it hits your knuckles. <laughs> right? It hurts your arms. It's, a, it's also a good workout. So that's a good example. Okay, let's make it rest. So, there's no force being added. It doesn't move. Once force gets added, and see, they can't make it rest for very long, can they? All right, let's head over to the pool table. A pool table is a great place to look at forces and things at rest. Okay? What happens on a pool table if you shoot the balls down from one end? It moves. Makes it them makes move. Sports. So, Charlotte, why don't you... Put the white ball down and see if you can hit the thing in the middle. Hit our, hit our, our bunch. <laughs> okay. You got one in. Wow, that was a lot of force. That was some good forces, wasn't it? Hi, All right, so let's try another little experiment, okay? Something fun, Malcolm. I'm gonna see if you can you can help make this happen, okay? Okay. So what we're gonna do is I want you to try to throw the ball, move that ball, move the first ball, and see if you can make it hit the, the second ball and then the third ball. Okay. So just use the move the white ball and see if you can make it make a chain reaction. Okay? So the last ball went a lot further than the second ball, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, because what happens is is the force of this ball hits that ball, and then that force 
is transferred. So the force of the white ball gets transferred into the force of the second ball. And then that. And then that hits the next ball, and all the force in that one gets transferred in that one. So that's why they move further. Okay, the green ball goes a lot further than the other two balls because the inertia and the forces are changed. Eva, you want to try? You want to throw the ball? See if you can hit one. Let's just put a few out for Eva. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Eva, you come a little closer here. There you go. Okay. See if you can hit that ball and move the other ones. We're talking about first. For right now, everything is at rest. Yep. Okay. Just like we should be more often. Can you make it go? Okay. So Eva is gonna help make them move. And oh, oh, she got one. All right. You wanna try again? See if you can get this pot in the middle here. See what happens. There we go. Look at all the balls, all the motion. <laughs> okay, when you are in a car, what should you always wear? Bathroom yes. belt. Okay, now, what does the seat belt help you do? Keeps you safe. Keeps you safe. Keeps you alive. Have you ever been in a car when the brace gets stuck on and the seat belt goes tight? Okay. Yeah. So when you're in an accident or stop hard, there all the forces are being put into you to move forwards, right? Mm -hmm. If you are not buckled in and the brakes are jammed on hard or you hit something, what happens to you? You get hurt. Well, if you're in the back seat, where do you end up? Oh. <laughs> Potentially in the front seat, right? And seat belts are really good at helping you. Now, what happens if you're sitting in the front seat and you stop really hard without a seat belt on? You're going to hit your face into the ceiling. Or go out the front windshield, which is oh, very yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Seat belts are there to help restrict the inertia that is in your body when you get rolling, right? Okay. And also, it helps parents not to worry so much about your safety. Because seatbelts are very good at helping save us. So yeah. something that we just want to remember is that when we are worried, what should we do? We should pray. pray. Yes. When we want, what was our lesson about today? Um, moving. Moving in inertia. But while, well, it also is about stopping and resting and waiting on God. My soul is quiet and waits for God alone. My hope comes from Him. him. So we need to just stop and rest and wait. And I know it's hard. It's hard to stop and wait, everything being so busy. But we want to make sure we take our time to rest and wait in Him. Because God cares about the things that worry us. And we just need to make sure we continually bring them to Him. Anyway, it's nice to be here with you today. We will talk to you later.